Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Sonic Unleashed Let's Play. So, we just got back from Professor Pickle's area after doing Rooftop Run Daytime. So now we're going to be heading off to the Spagonia Daytime boss, the, I think it was called the Egg Devil Ray, I think that's what it was called. But yeah, this is our second daytime boss that we're going to do, and this boss is, you know, he may look different in design, and... <laughs> Every time I see those little robots, they remind me of those little mini-cons from Transformers. I don't know why, they just do. But the Egg Devil Ray is kind of the same stick with uh, the Egg Beetle that we fought in uh, Missouri. And how it's... Uh, his attacks may be different, but how to destroy him is exactly the same. Now, if you remember uh, or recall back to uh, the Egg Beetle's uh, boss fight, is that... You know, there are two ways that you can take down the Egg Beetle. You can either dash into him, or you can, uh, you know, homing attack. The, uh, very on, uh, you know, what you can do at the time, you know, it's, it's always good. And this is one of those bosses where, yeah, if you keep dashing into it, you will hit it, uh, you will get combos in. Just like with Egg Beetle. The only difference is that this, uh, the Egg, uh... The Egg Devil Ray has a shield in front of it. If you dash into the front of the shield, like I just did, uh, you'll take it off, and then the next time you dash into him, you know, you'll get the hit in and whatnot. It, it makes the fight go by really quickly, and to tell you the truth, it took me a long time to figure that you can do that. I had no idea at first that you could dash into the shield, and then it's gone, and then if you dash into him again, you'll actually hurt him. But his attacks mostly consist of a bunch of laser attacks, so, you know, just keep an eye out for the little, uh, his little laser turrets there. And you should be perfectly fine, uh, don't, uh, quick step like I just did right there. <laughs> and, you know, in sections like this, he'll go into, like, vertical and whatnot. You just got, his attacks mostly consist of lasers, that's pretty much it. And then later, like, I, like, right now... Yeah, he will shoot a bunch of balls and everything like that, and he does uh, have um, these lasers uh, going in all specific patterns. It's mostly a uh, whole... In fact, all the daytime stages, I would say, is more of a reflex uh, type of thing. So you gotta make sure your re reflexes are up and going so you can um, easily defeat this boss. He'll also start doing this, too, uh, the, less, uh, the less health he has. Really easy to dodge, you know. Uh, though I don't demonstrate it too well here, you know. You can easily, if you time your dash right, you can easily get in the hit. And there you go, that's the egg, uh, the egg double ray. Not, not too difficult. You may lose a lot of rings, but, you know, if you try to be really good with your reflexes and not get hit that much, and, you know, you get yourself a good grade. I actually got myself an A. The first time I did, I got a C. I was hoping for an S, but... Eh, uh, whatever. An A is better than a C, so I have nothing to complain about. So, yeah, another one of his contraptions has bit the dust. And just doing some statistic crap and moving on to finally the next guy at Dimple. Woohoo! That's about three, right? I oh, don't know, I lost count. <laughs> uh, see, people, all the fucks I give. I do have one question, though. Or, I, not, not one question, but one thing that actually, you know... I don't know if it peeves me off, or it's just... Why does Sonic not think about this whatsoever? Is that... You you saw there in the cutscene that uh, Chip's necklace, you know, activates the little podium for uh, Sonic to put the Chaos Emerald. There is no point where he actually questions how Chip does that whatsoever. To me, is it's like he's pulling a silver moment, you know, in Sonic uh, in Sonic 06. You know, doesn't ask questions, but still trusts the person. It just why? 
I would have some pretty big questions if someone had a necklace that can activate an ancient uh, a japonium that has been existing for millions and millions of years. I mean, he never recalls or thinks about it whatsoever. I, I just don't understand. He does, I wouldn't say he would call out Chip on it, but seriously, he doesn't really ask that many questions, but eh, whatever. So we got one guy temple down, and I like I said, I think that was our third one, so we got four more to go. So now we're heading off to Haleska again to do it. Uh, it's daytime stage. This has got to be probably my second least favorite um, night nighttime stage. Did I say daytime stage? <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. I think I meant to say nighttime stage, but I was going to say daytime stage. We already did the daytime stage, so screw what I said. Uh, you'll see the reasons why I hate the nighttime stage of Haleska's. But right now, I'm just in the hub world just collecting stuff because, you know... The thing is, with the stage hub worlds, is that you only get some things with Daytime Sonic, and there's some things you only get as uh, Werehog Sonic. It's just... I... Uh, it's... I wouldn't recall it as bad design, but... Frankly, to tell you the truth, I would just rather them give me my things along the way. I mean, content. I mean, think of, uh, to me, it's like when you get concept art and everything like that. Um, it it can be kind of rewarding in its own way if it's not so tedious. Like finding the books in here and finding the records and. The videotapes and everything like that you know I don't really have that much of a problem whatsoever in fact I don't even have a problem with uh, that type of stuff because you know like in Sonic Colors and you know Sonic uh, generations like generations the red the red star rings you know they're meant for all concept and everything like that but you also get a achievement for them too so you know what that makes it all worth it getting all the concept in here there really is no achievement whatsoever Concept art, I don't mind whatsoever. Uh, music, I eh, don't mind either. But videotapes, that's probably where I cross the line because why do I need to find tapes in order for me to just get the cutscenes? It should be, if you just watch the cutscene once, it should already be in your cutscene library. But in here, they decide to have you go look for them like a damn scavenger hunt. Because they think, ah, oh, it'll be fun, and then no, it's not. It's not fun. It, it's just... Uh, because of that, I don't, if I remember in my main file, I don't have all the cutscenes, but I can go on more and more about how I don't like, uh, how they took all the concept and everything like that and turn it into a damn scavenger hunt. But folks, welcome to Aleska's nighttime stage, Cool Edge Night. And this stage can be pretty long, pretty tedious, only because of one thing, ice physics. And if you people know me, I hate ice physics with a burning passion. I really, really hate ice physics. Fuck them. Seriously. <laughs> Just fuck them. So, Cool Edge Knight doesn't really have that many gimmicks, except for it just being slippery. Right now, at this point, since we're technically on snow, there is really no loose of traction right now. When we start getting to the patches of ice, you know, patches that look like this, then, you know, we'll start uh, seeing those wonderful slippery physics. I mean, seriously. So you want to be extra careful with your traction here because there are some times you could go careening off one of the platforms here, you know, fall to your death. So it's not really the thing to be recommended. And also, if you're looking for all sorts of sun or moon metals, you know, You'll find these sculptures, like ice sculptures and snow sculptures, all over the place. Make sure you uh, destroy them, because sometimes there are metals or some sort of concept in there. So, if you're one of those people who want to look for 100% and all that, you know, keep an eye out for that stuff. Um, well, actually, we'll back, I take that back. We will learn a, um, we'll, we'll, we'll learn a new uh, trick to uh, pull... We'll uh, bleh, sorry. <laughs> we will learn a new trick that we're gonna have to use in order to progress through the stage. Right now, it's just wonderful, wonderful amounts of violence, and so far there really hasn't been any new Dark Gaia creatures whatsoever. Uh, just going back to the Dark Gaia creatures. Um, you know, 
I, I think I remember saying this all the way back in part two, but, you know, the Dark Guy creatures aren't really... Don't, 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 they don't leave that too much of an impact in this game because uh, if I remember back in that part, I said there's not that many variations of Dark Gaia creatures. There really isn't. Um, I can't recall a time after... Um, I, I can't recall a time after... What? After uh, Chunan's um, nighttime stage that we'll ever meet a brand new dark Gaia creature unless it's a nighttime boss other than that i can't i i can't uh i can't uh think of anything because you know the, the only variations of dark Gaia creatures they have are the only few types that they have and just that they j like I said, they just have different variations. Like you saw the little puppy dogs there. There's um, there's there's the green ones, and then there's also the red ones. Sorry, folks. Uh, someone unexpectedly texted me, so sorry if I've been stuttering a bit and kind of losing my tra my trail of thought here. But you know, they have the green ones, and they also have the red ones. The red ones are supposed to be a little bit tougher, but it's just that I don't know. They don't seem too different to me. If they had different attacks, maybe that would be a bit something. But even with that, that's still not that much. You know, they also have the regular guys. And, you know, they kind of look like... I don't know if they look like iguanas or something like that. But, you know, they're the... They're the uh, light blue ones. And then there's also the uh, purple ones that are actually are a little bit tougher to kill. Because they do have a higher, um, higher health bar. And I would say a higher health bar, but... They have more endurance than the regular um, Dark Guy minion does, and you know their attacks do more damage and whatnot. Then, well, then uh, you know the wizards that um, I think I mentioned back when we did a uh, Chunan uh, nighttime stage is that you know th there's different variations of wizards. There's the one that heals uh, their allies, and there's the one that uh, shoots fire. There's the one that shoots electricity. There's the one that makes them stronger. You know. That's it, but other than that, we don't really have that many variations. You know, it would be really cool if they would have, like, certain uh, Gaia creatures in certain areas, you know, in certain contents. Like, maybe have some sort of dark Gaia creature that can re uh, represent, like, a, maybe, like, a polar bear or a penguin or something like that. That would actually be pretty cool. Silly and cartoonish, but hey, uh, you know, it's Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> You're... There, you should really not have to take this guy too seriously. I mean, you can't uh, tell a mature, mature story with uh, Sonic. You really can. If you add a bit of charm to it, you know, it can work. You know, stuff like Shadow the Hedgehog, when you're trying to make it, you know, dark and more edgy, it just doesn't work. It really doesn't. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I hate uh, Shadow the Hedgehog. It's one of the reasons, but not. I have, I have a whole list of why I hate that game so much. <laughs> And for all those fans who do love the game, I'm sorry. I don't know what your deal is. So, just, yeah, just killing more guys. <laughs> That's all we're doing. Nothing new, really. At this point, you know, pretty much at the point of... When we got to a roof-type run uh, nighttime stage, I, I'm just sick and tired of it. That's pretty much why I got sick and tired of it the first time I played this game. I just really did not want to... I just didn't want to do it anymore. Ugh, but I had to continue on because, you know, being a Sonic fan, I think I can tolerate this uh, more than other people can because you give this game to a casual person and once they get to the Werehog stage, it's like, okay, I'm done with this game. This game officially sucks and everything like that. And to tell you the truth, my opinion is that you really can't judge a game until you at least beat it. Because if you just play it for like a couple seconds, like oh, I don't like this game. Okay, worst game. It's, uh, that that's such a co such a cop out way of just saying a game sucks, even though you didn't play the game fully, you didn't fully experience the game whatsoever. So you know, to me, you have to play the game all the way in order for you to say something, unless the game has humongous issues or glitches or something that just 
that you can't progress through the area whatsoever. If there's no way you can progress through the game, if there's some sort of damn obstacle or some sort of horrible design choice or something like that, then I can understand, you know. I'm trying to think, like, uh, I'm trying to think of a game on the top of my head that has a bad design choice that um, most people can't um, get past it. Um, I want to say the first Bubsy game, but I'm not too sure because, you know, one hit and you know you're dead you know they didn't even decide to put any endurance with this with him whatsoever you know they could have used the yarn as rings i mean they're trying to copy sonic already so why not do that but uh you know it'll almost likely come to me but folks this is actually where the part's gonna end pretty soon because this stage is long and you know i don't want to you know bore you guys or make it more tedious because you know I think we only got like halfway through the stage and we still got like at least about a 10 to 13 minutes to go. I shit you not. So until then, I'll see you guys in the rest of Haleska's nighttime stage in part 12.